These are the burning oil fields in Kuwait at the end of the Gulf War. It is probably one of the most hellish war zones to have ever existed. The inferno was fueled and driven by one of the many conflicts between Iraq and the United States. We must ask, why did this happen? Petroleum, often referred to as crude oil, is a sludgy black liquid found in underground deposits. It is formed by the remains of plants and animals decaying over millions of years under great pressure and temperatures. Sometimes these deposits leak and allow some oil to the surface, resulting in our knowledge of the substance for thousands of years. Crude oil, before its modern usage, ranged in use from medical supplies to a sealant for boats and construction. Oil refining involves heating crude oil to separate it into different components through distillation. Each component is separated by their boiling points. First, pumped into a furnace towards a distillation tower. At around 20 degrees Celsius, butane and propane separate off. At 150, petrol, also known as gasoline. At 200, kerosene. At 300, diesel. At 370, heavy fuel oils, and at 400, bitumen, also known as asphalt. In 1860, the Belgian engineer Etienne Lenoir developed the first internal combustion engine, later being improved upon by German engineer Nicolaus Otto in 1876. Ten years later, the first car was developed by the Austrian Karl Benz, but the modern stage of the car's life begins in 1890 with Benz's further developments. The development of automotive vehicles was rapidly ramped up during and following the First World War. This was due to changing military strategies such as the implementation of tanks, armoured trucks, planes and the falling usefulness of horses. Prior to and during the Second World War, development only accelerated with better tanks, trucks and aircraft. Prior to World War II, European powers, particularly Britain and France, had a strong presence in the Middle East through their colonial holdings and mandates. These colonial powers controlled significant portions of the region. However, after the war, decolonization movements gained momentum, and many countries in the Middle East, including Iraq, Iran, and Saudi Arabia, sought to gain control over their own resources, including their oil. In 1960, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, was founded. It initially consisted of Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela, but would continue to gain new members as years went on. Its primary goal was to assert greater control over oil prices and production levels. During the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, OPEC imposed an embargo on oil against the allies of Israel, including the United States. This demonstrated the growing influence of oil-producing nations in the Middle East and their ability to impact global oil markets. After this major embargo, a lot of countries began looking for new sources of oil, including with the development of offshore oil rigs. In the 1980s, Iran and Iraq go through a war over territorial disputes. The balance of oil productions shifts into the hands of non-OPEC countries, who are now producing the majority. This allows the market to set the rate for oil rather than OPEC. Although for most colonial and industrial countries, most of their oil came from elsewhere, the stability of the Middle East was paramount. By the late 1980s, many Western nations had positioned warships in the Persian Gulf. This was mostly due to Iraq and Iran's increasing interest in the oil sites of the area. By now, Iraq and Iran's war has ended and Iraq is in massive debt to Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. To attempt to remedy this, Iraq, which had been almost landlocked by the post-colonial borders of Britain and France, attempted to lease the port city of Umm Qasr from Kuwait, which Kuwait promptly declined. Due to a breakdown in financial talks and Iraq's more dominant military presence, on the 2nd of August 1990, they invaded Kuwait. The United States form a coalition with surrounding countries to push back this force into Iraq. Following this Gulf War, the United States sets military bases into various Middle Eastern countries due to them signing multiple defense agreements and weapon sales to Gulf nations. Within the next few years, Saudi Arabia would become the world's largest oil exporter. As a result of the outcomes of the war, 
there are many in the Middle East who resent and hate the United States' presence and iron grip over the region. September 11, 2001, New York City. Two planes strike the World Trade Center buildings. The North Tower is struck by American Airlines Flight 11, killing hundreds immediately. Flight 77 strikes the South Tower approximately 15 minutes later. Both towers would eventually collapse within a couple of hours of the first collision. During the cataclysm in New York, another plane crashes into the headquarters of the United States Department of Defense, the Pentagon. This kills 184 civilians and military personnel. After the events that day, it would become apparent that it was an intentional attack on US soil. Al-Qaeda took credit for the deaths and destruction, giving reasonings such as US support of Israel and oppressive Arab regimes. Following this massive loss of civilian life, the United States under President George Bush launched multiple wars in the War on Terror campaign. This included the invasion of multiple countries and hunting of Islamic terror group members. These wars have spanned the last 20 years and have somewhat been considered to have ended with the retracting of US troops from Afghanistan. The results were massively disbanded and weakened terror organizations and countries. This helped with the certainty of the oil market, as these countries had to keep selling oil to stay afloat. There has been extreme criticism of these wars and US leadership after information came to light, such as the reasoning for the Iraq invasion. It was asserted by the British and American leadership that Iraq was building and stockpiling nuclear weapons. They were not. But there are other costs to the access of this black gold. Shifting back over to the Western Hemisphere in the Gulf of Mexico, 2010, the oil rig Deepwater Horizon, leased by British Petroleum, suffers an explosion caused by a technical fault, which drastically damages the rig. The explosion kills 11 of the workers and over the next three months, leaks 3 million barrels of oil into the ocean. It is widely regarded as the most damaging man-made event in history, causing over $17 billion of damage to the natural resources alone. Crude oil, along with other fossil fuels, significantly impacts the environment. Extraction, refining, and transport release pollutants causing air and water pollution, respiratory issues, and acid rain. Combustion emits greenhouse gases, intensifying global warming. Overall, crude oil's life cycle profoundly influences air and water quality, biodiversity, climate stability, and human well-being. Transitioning to sustainable energy sources is crucial in mitigating these adverse effects. Although some already developed Western countries have reduced their usage, it just seems as if Asian giants are taking their place, as the consumption rates rise continuously with no signs of slowing.